Well, my God, so much. It's a situation that says, you know what? My friend Pete tries to help people out, tries to do the best he can to help people out. But sometimes people just can't get the help that they need because they don't want to. They're as thick as a brick and as tall as a wall. And they don't want nobody pushing on them or getting in their business. But when it comes down to doing work over here at SWRHCs, see I'm a slabby beautiful hat that I got. Got a little crease in it right there. I gotta fix that. I gotta get the iron out. Gotta iron the problem out. Get that hat back in shape. Kinda like what my friend Pete does with some of his employees he's got here that don't give a fuck. Comes over here with problems and problems arise from problems is what we got. Kinda like that big crease, that cocksucker. Look at that son of a bitch. I gotta get rid of that. Anyway, it's a beautiful hat still. You know the cocksucker's fucking still here. And it ain't going anywhere. Because I'm Sammy Salami, you motherfucking bastard. This ain't about Sammy Salami, though. This is about a 1969 Chevelle. My friend Pete's been working meticulously hard on this cocksucker, trying to get it to the stages of situations that will be solutions in the end. Let's go ahead and get into this video. See what part number we're on over here. And hopefully you, the cocksucker piece of shit viewer that's watching this, is learning something from it. Because I'm not doing this for my health, you motherfucker. I'm doing this because my friend Pete won't give me McDonald's, hamburgers, slits, all liquors. It says he needs me here. He says that. He tells me he needs me. Sammy, don't leave, Sammy. You're a good edit type guy. You know how to edit. You're the edit guy. What can I say? Got to do something in life besides be a bum. Sammy Slammy. Straight out of Miami. Looking at a 1969 Savelle and saying it's going to look good. It's going to look great. But will the employee last? Because he's being an asshole. Because he's being a hard head. Because he's being something that we don't need over here at SWRCs. We already got enough of this bullshit going on. Seven Celebs straight out of Miami, and I'm gonna tell you what. If you can't get your shit straight, don't try to bend it in half, cause it ain't gonna break, bitch. Basically, like I just said, you take a nice clean bucket of water, you get a uh, nice clean rag, a rag that's probably never been used possibly. And when I say a rag, I'm really not talking about a rag, I'm talking about a towel. Uh, you can buy these towels in packs of 12 and uh, do what? Make sure you wash your hands. Yeah, no shit. This is what I'm talking about, this towel right here. Now you can buy these towels at your local hardware store or automotive store. Um, what do they call these? Can you hold that, please? What do they call those? Uh, uh, microfiber rags? Microfiber, there you go. There it is, right there. So, 
Uh, these are what we're talking about. These are microfiber rags. Now you buy these, they're brand new, never used. And what I do with these is when I don't want to wash the car using soapy water in my hose, um, I'll take one of these with nice clean water and I'll clean the car off really good to get all the, the scum from the sanding job like we did yesterday. Well, I fucked up. Are you listening? Yeah. I fucked up. I fucked up because I accidentally grabbed this rag. Don't, don't touch it. Sorry. I'm sorry. Don't, don't touch it. Okay. Okay. I got it. I got it. Okay. I accidentally used this rag right here, which is a rag that is used for something else. We actually cleaned the inside of the hood with that rag and got all and got the rag contaminated with grease. With grease. And since I have so many of these laying around, I wasn't even thinking. All I was thinking about is how nice the job's going to turn out. And I used a contaminated rag to wash my car off with before painting. And, and what was the result? Fish eye. We got fish eye in the car. Now I got to resand the whole fucking car with 400, then 600. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. on the car in there and I'm going to show you what we're talking about. Uh, we got some fenders over here and it just happened to fish eye on that. Let's go look at those. Now everywhere that you see, back it up a little bud. There you go. Okay. Can you see me? Yeah. All right. Everywhere that you're looking at right here where you see the black dust, that's where I spot primed it. That's the last guide coat that I was going to use on this. But I'm going to go ahead and sand that right here. I'm going to show you what happened from using a dirty contaminated rag. I'm showing you the fuck up that goes on. So if you look right here in this area, watch what this looks like after I sand it. And I don't think I put enough paint there. I didn't. Let's see if we can get it. Okay, that's not showing it as well as I wanted it to either. Okay. Uh, Let's go back over here and look at it on the car again. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to show you what fisheye looks like and what happens when you contaminate your, uh, your prep job. And, and this is a good lesson to learn not to fucking do this uh, or actually be careful how you're doing it. Like let's say, for instance, when you're taping the car off, okay, your hands have grease in them. Did you know that? Yeah. All right, so if you went and ate lunch, and then you came back. Why are you shaking the camera, bud? Be careful. Be careful. So let's say you go eat lunch, and then you come back after you eat lunch, and you're not careful, and you're over there touching the car and everything. Anywhere that you touched it is going to create a, uh, a film on top of your prep job. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and sand this area right here. I'm going to show you what we're talking about on fisheye. You can see where I uh, put a guide coat on it everywhere that I uh, primed it. Do you see what I'm saying here? Come on over here and show. So this is everywhere that I spot primed it. I put a guide coat on it. And then I was going to be done with it. I was going to go ahead and uh, wet sand it with 600 and then be done with it. But watch what happens. Okay, I want you to look right here. Do you see all those little black spots? And all, that's a fish eye. Okay, bring it up here. See all these little black specks here? Come on, follow my fingers. What are you doing? Back it up a little. Okay, now bring it on down so people can see that. So, what I'm telling you is when you contaminate your paint job and you don't even realize it, your prep job, you just fucked up. So now what I gotta do is I gotta go back and 400 wet sand all the spots that I reprimed and then go over the whole fucking car with what? 600. With 600. So it's very important to watch what the fuck you're doing, especially when you're contaminating your paint job, you don't even know it. Fisheye is a disease when it comes to painting a car. Uh, I'm really upset and depressed that this happened because I was actually going to paint the car today. Yeah. I was going to paint the car today, but you know what? 
I'm glad that it happened with this primer instead of the paint. See that it's all taped off. Can you show everybody that? We got the car taped and ready for paint. What I'll do is I'll do a quick scan uh, block job on it with my 600 after I block sand with 400 on the reprime spots. Once that's done, we should be ready to go ahead and possibly spot prime it one more time or go straight to epoxy primer and paint. It's really, really important to watch what the fuck you're doing and how you're doing it. What you're looking at here, this is fisheye. This is fisheye. This could happen to you. This could happen, and it's not a happy situation. Once again, I'm glad it happened in the primer, and it's from being, it's from using contaminated materials such as our dirty, filthy rag. Where is that rag? All right, so when you're using stuff like this, instead of stuff like this, it's your fault, not anybody else's fault. Okay, 972. How are we doing on our job over here? Now what you're doing, come on over here and explain to everybody what you're doing to the door. Because this is a prep job that really counts here. So what's going on? I'm scuffing this area with the hinges and I'm putting lacquer on, thinner on it to clean it. Okay, so you took lacquer thinner and you're cleaning it. Yep. And then uh, once you do that, what's the next? Uh, just sand up here. What about Scotch-Brite? Yeah, Scotch-Brite. Okay, you're taking Scotch-Brite and you're cleaning around all the hinges, getting all the filthy dirt and scum. I see a bunch of it right in here, bud. What's yeah, going I know. on? I haven't, even got it, I haven't even got it on there yet. Look at that dirt. I'm doing this. I haven't got it Okay, the let's get those hinges. Make sure you use that Scotch-Brite. That's what's causing our problems right there is all of that kind of shit, okay? Yep. All right, bud. Doing a good job, 972. Let's keep it up. Are you learning anything over here? Yep. Good. You're learning that restoration is a lot harder than collision. There yeah. you go. So what I'll do is I'll take my hand block here and I'll go ahead and repeat the process of block sanding. It's a big process. It's a process that says, you know what? It's a muscle car makeover. It's a it's a job that says I have to do a good job because that's the only job that I want to do is a good job. Let me get this block sand out one more time. And uh, we'll be back to see what happens next on the Muscle Car Makeover right here at DIY Auto School with my friend Pete, your friend Pete, everybody's friend Pete, showing you how to do it right, showing you how not to fuck up, showing you that it's going to be okay in the end because that's all there is about it. just got the car in sealer now uh, it came out pretty nice we had some situations where we fucked up I showed you that I went ahead and block sanded it all down using 400 then 600 again and we have now got the car in sealer and what I'm doing now I'm taking a piece of old 400 that you see right here this is a used piece of 400 and a white ball and I'm nibbing out the sealer um, I've only found three spots on the whole car and it really looks good. So if you look right here you can see that the whole car has been put in a nice clean coat of epoxy primer and I've let this sit for approximately one hour. It's got a real real nice sheen to it and that's showing me that our prep job came out just like we wanted it to be. The next thing I'm doing here is if you look right here in this spot there was a little piece of trash right here and what I did is I took my 400 and I just went over it very lightly there was another spot right here and then there was some kind of trash right in this area taking my 400 and lightly sanding that is nibbing it out here's another spot right here you want to be real careful when you're sanding with your fingers not to sand a uh, long way like this because what will happen your fingers will make a groove in it so you want to sand out that little spot and then once you're done doing that kind of feather it out and then that will uh, 
leave it where you won't have any imperfections as you're putting your paint on. And then of course the next thing we're going to do is take a nice clean white ball. This is an automotive paint grade white ball. This is not a white ball that you buy at fucking uh, AutoZone or O'Reilly's. This is bought at a paint and body shop supply store designed specifically for doing this type of work. I don't use tack rags. I don't like tack rags because they got the waxy feeling to them and I've had situations arise so I use white balls which are lint free 100% clean rags and then what I'll do is I'll come over here like this and then wipe that off. You can see the dust that I just took off. All right. And then I'll do the same right here, over here, right here in this area. And then there was a spot on our roof right here. So the car's ready to paint. I'm going to go ahead and just paint this. And I will walk you through the steps and procedures of painting your vehicle as I paint the doors and the other small pieces. Because it's really going to be hard to put my camera in here and actually show you how to lay the paint down and do it right with uh, the car in here. So we'll be back once the car is painted and once again I am going to show you and go over the, the supplies and all of the goodies that it takes to paint a car like this when we get ready to paint the doors and the fenders and the hood and the trunk. So let me get the car painted and uh, when we come back we'll do a nice little quick walk around of it and just see what it looks like and then we will go into our doors and our fenders and paint those and that's where I'm going to show you of the materials and the techniques that you want to use when you paint your car. <sighs> Wish me luck and let's hope that we don't have no fucking problems. I don't know what the fuck the situation is but this is where it really really gets scary and it gets technical and uh, you start getting a little fucking shaky because you just don't want to fucking have to redo it again. Uh, I'll be back and hopefully everything will turn out great. Alright, we just got done painting the car. It's 11.45 at night. We started painting it about 3.30 this afternoon. Let's go look at it. Like I said, I'm going to take you through the steps and procedures of painting with the doors and all the other bolt-on parts. So let's go in there and check it out and see what we got. And hopefully, the owner's gonna like what he sees. All right, there it is right there. 1968 Chevelle uh, Big Block 396 SS Coupe painted. You can see the gloss in the finish. It's not even buffed yet. When we buff that baby down, it's gonna look like a mirror. I don't think the owner was expecting a job to this magnitude and quality. Um, I will say that my friend Pete gives 110% on everything he does because I want it to look right and I want it to be right. Now, there is times that it ain't going to look right because of the prep job. Remember that word, prep job? I don't give a fuck what you do or how you do it. You can paint it a million fucking times. If your fucking prep job isn't right, and I'm talking about all the way from your fucking Bondo, all the way through your primer stage, your block sanding, all the way to the epoxy primer, it will never fucking be right. So it always doesn't turn out the way that you imagine it to be unless you take your time and you go to the magnitude of doing the prep job properly. We did a lot of fucking prep job to this fucking car and I think it paid off. Now the car is still going to need color sand and buffed but you can see that uh, the panels on this are like a fucking razor blade. They're straight as a fucking arrow. There's no imperfections anywhere in it, and it just looks fucking great. I mean, the uh, hard work and the hard labor that me and Clown Act 972 has performed on this has paid off. It's paid off, and it's going to be a great fucking job when it's done. 
You can see the type of paint job you get when you paint it with the doors off and all the front end parts that the paint is going to match 100% perfect and you'll never even know that this was painted before. This is a, this is a semi concourse style restoration here because we went to the magnitude of taking all the fenders off and the doors and, and painting it inside and out. And we actually did it the proper way. We left our hinges on the vehicle. That's the way that you want to fucking do it because once you remove these hinges, once those hinges are going to be removed, it, it's, it's very, very hard to get that fucking door mounted like factory original. So always try to take the door hinge pins off to remove your doors for refinishing than removing the hinge itself. So it's fucking late tonight and uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and go home. <sighs> big fucking job, big fucking job, but in the end it all pays off. And you know, like I've said before, if you're running into problems, and situations arise, there's always the solution there. Because in the end, always think of the end, everything's gonna work out for the best. We'll see you later, take it easy, I'm going home. We'll be back on our muscle car restoration when we get all of the bolt-on parts in the paint booth and ready for paint. You don't wanna miss that set because I'm gonna show you how to mix your paint, what kind of paint to use, how to spray the paint with an HVLP spray gun, and then go ahead and apply the clear, and it's gonna be a step and procedure that is gonna help you, the viewer, the guy at home, the fucking do-it-yourself wannabe motherfucker, learn how to do it right. We'll see you later. Come on over here, we got us a situation. Turn my heater off. All right, come on in here, bud. Now, what we've been working on here for the last several months, we've been working on what, Dylan? What year is that? 68, 69, possibly. Big block SS, 396, original, all factory original, never fucked with car. Okay, the guy lives up in North Carolina, South Carolina, where the fuck he lives, I don't know. But he brought his car down here for us to go ahead and do a muscle car makeover. Are you listening? All right, we've been working our ass off, am I correct? You and me have been busting our ass to get this bitch done. And the situation is, we're getting it done. Now, I painted it last night, it came out beautiful. What the fuck are you doing? Okay, we'll look at everything later, okay, dude? So what we got here, we got the 69 Chevelle right here. Look at it, 68 SS. Now, we've been doing an extreme makeover on this car and, and, and starting to really look nice, all right? Am I right? Yeah. I mean, we're going down to the fine tooth fucking comb situation of making sure everything is fucking done properly. Are we zoomed out all the way there? Let me look at that camera. Okay. So, if we can look at the car while I talk, I'd appreciate it, Dylan. Can I have the camera, please? Thank you. Hold the sponge. There you go. Now, what's going on today, bud? None. Are you all right? Yep. Because you're acting a little mopey. Oh, wow. Why? I'm fine. Why? What happened to your gauges? What about them? They're still there. Where are they at? Just in my ear. Oh, that's a gauge? Yeah. Oh, okay, because you had something else in there the other day. That's a gauge, too. It's called a taper. Okay, that's a taper gauge. Yeah. Okay, what's the difference? Taper is where you put it in your ear to, uh -huh. make, to make the hole bigger, and then this is to heal it. Oh, so that thing you bought was just a temporary thing? Yeah. Oh, and then you go to that one, and then if you want to make it bigger, you can put another taper in there. Yeah. All right, well, that's cool. Yeah. How's your mouth healing up? It's fine. Yeah? Are you going to have scars there the rest of your life? No. You think those dots will go away, or? Yeah, they'll go away. Huh. So how you doing today, bud? Good. What are you working on over there? Fender. We're working on the fenders. 
Why don't you uh, get a little bit happy, dude? You think you seem mopey and dopey and no, and fine. down and depressed? Why, Dylan? I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine. Well, we should be happy today. Look what happened here, dude. Yeah. The Chevelle body is painted. Yeah. Now the situation is we've been working on this fucking thing for a long time, yeah. approximately five months, yeah. four or five months, yeah. and, and and it's coming to the end. What I did is I, I dismantled everything off the car. Now, the way that I dismantled that, look what I did here, dude. Yeah. I didn't unbolt the hinges. I took them off at the hinge pins because we're going to replace the hinge pins and bushings. If you want to do it the factory way, that's the way to do it. That way you don't have to worry about your fucking door being adjusted and all this other bullshit. Yeah. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Come on out here, bud. Let's go. You know, I don't know what the fucking deal is going on around here, but the situation is, you know, you try to help people out, you give them a fucking job, and they're still not fucking happy. My friend Pete tries to help people out, tries to do the best he can to help people out, but sometimes people just can't get the help that they need because they don't want to. <sighs> There's nothing else I can do. There's nothing else I can do but say keep fucking working or go find another job. They're as thick as a brick and as tall as a wall. Does that make sense? Makes sense. What I just said. And they don't want nobody pushing on them or getting in their business. I just told you, I said, I was just talking to everybody out there in La La Land and I told them, I don't know what the deal is, dude. You're depressed and, and you're upset and, and the situation is, is that, you know, I'm trying to fucking help you, Dylan. But when it comes down to doing work over here at SWR and says, Sammy Salami beautiful out that I got. Got a little crease in it right there. I gotta fix that. I gotta get the iron out. Gotta iron the problem out. Get that hat back in shape. Kinda like what my friend Pete does with some of his employees he's got here that don't give a fuck. Comes over here with problems, and problems arise from problems. Is what we got. Kinda like that big crease, that cocksucker. Look at that son of a bitch. I gotta get rid of that. What are we doing here, dude? Because we dismantled the car. What's going on? It's 180. This car. Okay, we got a 180 that, and then I want to get this in here. I want to scotch bright all that, okay? Because the paint's going to blow up in there. What else? Now, how are you cleaning that? Can you go ahead and explain to everybody? Lacquer thinner and scotch bright. Lacquer thinner, scotch bright, because that's all like grease, grease spill. You might want to get some more lacquer thinner in there. I don't think there's enough, dude. Yeah, okay. Okay, so why don't you just keep working and hopefully your day will get better. Yeah. So you got a little bit of water in your shoes, your, soaks are, your socks are wet, and, you know. I don't know how the fuck that happened, but you got it done and it's a done deal and there's nothing else we can do, bud. Okay? Alright, I'll be back with you in a minute, okay? Keep working, dude. You're doing a good job. Now, you did the same thing to the doors yesterday, right? Alright. Cleaned all the jams and stuff. Okay. Keep working, okay, bro? Alright, let's get some more lacquer thinner in that so we can get it done a little faster, okay, dude? Alright, well, you know, time is an essence here, bud. <sighs> okay, so basically what we're doing is we are painting our 69 Chevelle. Now, I got this Chevelle in approximately, I believe it was around August. I'm not for sure when it was, but I think it was August. And um, we've been working on it painstakingly. It might have been late July. Uh, this is basically a muscle car makeover. This isn't a, a, a fucking restoration because we did not remove all the interior. We didn't strip it down to bare metal and, and redo all the bodywork. The car was pretty clean when it got here. And, and, and it's a fucking car that says, you know what, I'm proud to own it because I'm the second owner of this car and it's all factory OEM original. That means that all the panels on this car are the original panels. Everything fits perfect. Everything looks great. And all we need is a good, clean paint job on it, my friend Pete. Can you do that for me, my friend Pete, over there at SWRNC Southwest Rod Custom? Yes, I can do that. We have been uh, meticulously working on this car. We've primed it three or four times. We fucking um, uh, block sanded it. How many times have we block sanded that? How many? Probably about, we're going on our fourth time of block sanding, right? We're going down to 600 now. Because the situation is, when you're doing a muscle car such as this, and it's a collector car that uh, is, is at the extreme of what we're working on, you want to make sure that you do it right and proper, which should be anything anyway. Am I right? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. All right, is there anything you got to say to anybody out there? I mean, no. why are you acting the way you are today? Why? Well, just tell me why. Talk to me, please. 
Why are you being so depressed? I'm not depressed. Okay, if you say so. Oh, just leave it be. Yeah. So we'll leave Mopey alone and let him fucking do what he's got to do while we're working on the doors. And this is the doors right here, ready to hang on our parts tree and paint. We're going to try to paint all these pieces at one time and, and get everything painted so it's ready to color sand, buff, and, and, and be done with. Put the car back together and get her down the road back to North Carolina, South Carolina, wherever the fuck this guy's from. That's where it's going back home. So if you are interested in uh, seeing all the videos of this vehicle, if you are interested in seeing detailed uh, custom fucking muscle car makeover situations and you want to learn how to do it like my friend Pete does from start to finish, make sure that you watch DIY Auto School. That's DIY Auto School on YouTube. Tune into that channel and you're going to see a step-by-step -step situation of how to restore or should I say make over your muscle car or maybe you're possibly the daily driver car that you're driving today. I take you through every individual step of how to meticulously paint the car and do it properly just like I'm doing right here. So visit DIY Auto School, that's DIY Auto School over on my friend Pete's other channel uh, that's going to show you how to do everything properly and, and possibly maybe uh, Clown972 there can get his shit together and wake up and, and maybe possibly be happy one day and he can show us exactly what he's doing. Uh, until then, I don't know. I don't know because he's being a mopey mope and uh, hopefully he'll come out of it because he's actually a pretty nice kid and I like him and, uh, you know, I think he's got potential. But the real deal is, is he's got to prove to himself that the potential is there, that he can do it himself. And until that day comes, he probably will be just like he is today. What do you think of that, Bud? I don't really care. You don't? So you really don't like people helping you? You're like this guy that wants to do everything on your own, right? Yep. Am I right? Yep. So you don't, you don't want no advice from anybody in the world. You don't care about people helping you out or, or giving you a helping hand, I might say, to better your life. Why not? Because it's my life, I'll figure it out myself. Okay. Well, until then, can you do me a good job over here? That's what I'm trying to do. And you are, bud. You're doing a great job. I appreciate it, okay? Alright. Are we working tomorrow? Today's Friday. I have no clue. Okay. I think I'm going to be here tomorrow, okay? Yeah. 8 o'clock tomorrow. Can you be here at 8? I don't know. It depends on if I can look at my dad. Okay. So let's get here at 8, okay? I'm sorry. Alright. Think you'll be in a better mood tomorrow, bud? No, no. Alright. Well, you know, I'm here to help you, okay? Alright? Yeah. Alright. Keep up the good work, dude. It's looking nice, Dylan. 972 fucking clown, fucking clown, fucking guy. Take it easy, bud. Alright. See you later. We can't give up on him. You can't give up on him. Tell him to go fuck off and tell him to hit the fucking rope. Uh, you yeah, know, he'll be alright. He's a good kid. Uh, and hopefully, one day he'll be proud of what he does, such as what he's doing now. DIY Auto School, muscle car makeover, 1968 SS 396 big block fucking car. Watch that video set, and you're going to learn a lot. We'll see you later. Take it easy. I got to get back to sanding. Dylan's got to get that fender done, because he's got another fender to do. And uh, we got a lot of shit going on. I want to try to paint this crap today. Classes don't stop till you know it.